Okay, let's talk some thyroid. Your thyroid is just at the base of your trachea, or sorry, at the base of your larynx where it meets your trachea. Uh, it has two lobes that are held together by an isthmus. And it has a bunch of follicles that make it up, um, that are filled with cells that produce two different hormones that we'll talk about in a moment. If you look at it under a microscope, you can see these follicles, and they are uh, filled with this protein. Um, so these are large and pink. They're filled with colloid protein. Uh, and then they're surrounded by a ring of cells, and this whole thing is one follicle. So inside, you can tell it's not living cells. It's just protein because there are no nuclei, right? That's the colloid follicle. Um, and then the follicular cells are the ring around the outside. Again, you can tell they're cells because each one of them has um, a nucleus. These are uh, simple columnar epithelial cells. And these cells are what produce thyroid hormone or thyroxin. And there are a couple of different types of thyroxin, but we're not going to uh, delineate between the two of them here. Thyroxin itself, uh, or thyroid hormone, stimulates uh, your metabolism, right? It causes you to speed up um, how much glucose you burn and how much ATP you make. Uh, in addition to these follicles, this um, you know protein surrounded by the follicular cells, you have these sort of in-between cells like these and these and these, and those are called C cells, uh, and they produce another hormone called calcitonin. And calcitonin has to do with calcium regulation. Calcitonin is produced when you have a lot of calcium in your blood, and it causes you to reduce the amount of calcium you have in your blood by storing it. Where do we store calcium? Well, in your bones. Your bones are a great storage receptacle for calcium, and we can then use it later if you have low blood calcium. If you look at the back of the thyroid gland, you have another gland sitting on the back, really a group of glands. These are parathyroid glands, each of these. And your parathyroid gland produces a hormone called parathyroid hormone. And it also has to do with calcium regulation. And whereas calcitonin produced by the C cells in your thyroid reduces blood calcium levels and causes you to store calcium in your bones, parathyroid hormone causes you to take that calcium out of your bones and then increase the level of calcium that's in your blood that's then usable by your cells. And these two hormones work together to make sure that you have the appropriate amount of, uh, of calcium in your blood. Um, now, you may remember from last semester, um, the cells that build bone are called osteoblasts, right? So calcitonin is going to stimulate osteoblasts to build more bone, thereby taking calcium out of the blood and storing it in the bone. Parathyroid hormone is going to cause you to break down old bone and then release that calcium into the blood. You may remember that osteoclasts are the cells uh, that break down old bone. So parathyroid hormone inhibits osteoblasts but stimulates osteoclasts. And this is what your parathyroid gland looks like um, histologically under a microscope. So you can see this is a different stain, but you can see that this is thyroid here. You can see those follicles and those follicular cells around it and the C cells producing calcitonin. Those are also called parafollicular cells sometimes. Uh, but this is your parathyroid gland, and it's full of all these cells uh, which produce parathyroid hormone. This is uh, a type of figure that you're going to see in your book a lot this semester. And it shows uh, what happens when you leave homeostasis. So um, in this case, we're talking about blood calcium levels. If your blood calcium levels go up from your typical homeostatic levels, the, where you want them, right? Um, then you've disturbed your homeostasis, too much calcium, your thyroid gland, those C cells are gonna produce calcitonin, which is going to cause you to um, deposit calcium in bone, build new bone, will also cause you to get rid of more of your calcium in your kidneys and you come back down to normal. If instead homeostasis was disturbed by having too little calcium in your blood, parathyroid hormone would be produced by your parathyroid gland, would cause you to break down old bone and release that calcium, would also cause you to be a lot tighter with your calcium in your kidneys, so you would not get rid of as much calcium in your 
uh, urine, and it also is going to cause you to utilize vitamin D or calcitriol um, to increase calcium absorption in your intestines. Okay, let's move on to the adrenal gland. Your adrenal gland is sometimes called the suprarenal gland, and both of those terms mean above the kidney. Renal refers to kidney. So adrenal and suprarenal both mean they are the little hats that sit on top of your kidneys. Like your kidneys, they are behind your, your peritoneum, which we'll talk about later in the semester. Um, they're yellowish because they have a lot of stored lipids. Fats tend to be yellow. And the reason for that is, uh, especially in your cortex, your adrenal cortex, you're producing a lot of steroid hormones, which are made from cholesterol. Like your pituitary gland, it's really a couple of glands that just happen to be smushed together in one spot. Uh, the adrenal cortex is on the outside, producing corticosteroids. The adrenal medulla is on the inside, producing adrenaline, so epinephrine and norepinephrine. It also has, like most organs do, a thin outer layer of connective tissue. In this case, that's called the adrenal capsule. This is a quick look at the adrenal gland. Again, literally looks like a tiny little hat on top of the kidney on each side. And if you cut it open, you can see the cortex on the outside and the medulla on the inside. The cortex itself is um, layered into a bunch of zones and it really produces a bunch of different hormones, but different ones at each layer. So the zona glomerulosa, which is in the outer region, produces mineral corticoids. Um, and the one that I want you to remember is aldosterone. So mineral corticoids mean um, they're steroids, um, you know, steroid hormones that regulate minerals. Um, aldosterone specifically regulates sodium. Aldosterone is your sodium retaining hormone. So if you have low blood sodium levels, you're going to secrete aldosterone and it's going to cause you to retain a lot of sodium. Now this is important for blood pressure because sodium is one of the main solutes in your body, one of the main things dissolved in your blood plasma, and water follows solutes. And so if you retain sodium, you also retain water. Uh, and retaining water means more blood, means more blood pressure. And we'll talk about that a lot over the next several chapters. The next one down is the zona fasciculata. And the most important hormone that this produces is cortisol, which is a type of, of glucocorticoid which means it has to do with glucose. And cortisol is a stress hormone and not like epinephrine's a stress hormone, like, uh, you know, adrenaline, but like longer term stress. Like, oh man, this chapter is really, really difficult and I do not know how I'm gonna learn it all. And I have to pass this class to get into my program and I don't know how I'm gonna do it, all right? That kind of stress, uh, don't worry. You will study hard. You will get in touch with me when you need help and you will do fine. Um, but typically, in terms of our evolutionary history, that kind of stress has to do with food availability, right? And very often it still does, right? Um, hey man, I, it's COVID and I, I've lost my job and I don't know how I'm gonna pay for my groceries next week, right? Um, or I don't know, again, think thousands of years ago, um, it's winter's coming and I don't know when I'm going to find another patch of berries or, or tubers that I can eat. Um, anyway, so stress has to do with glucose availability uh, at its deepest level. And cortisol is what you produce when you're sort of stressed like that. And it preserves glucose for your brain because while a lot of your other organs, almost all of them can utilize fats and proteins for metabolism, in, in, if there's not enough sugar around, your brain can't. Your brain has to use sugar. It has to use glucose. And so cortisol causes what's termed a glucose sparing effect. All of your other tissues then stop using glucose, start burning fats and proteins, and they leave the glucose for your brain. In fact, in addition to not using glucose, they will often break down extra fats and proteins to turn them into glucose to make sure that your brain has enough. Um, now, burning fat sounds good. In reality, if you do this long enough, you can end up having very high blood sugar that gets deposited as fat elsewhere where it's not quite as healthy. Uh, and so you can end up having um, uh, health problems due to a lot of stress, right? So tonight, you know, take a bath, light a candle, 
uh, read a book, relax. As long as it's your anatomy book, that's what you need. Um, but anyway, cortisol does that. It's a long-term stress hormone, uh, causes this glucose sparing effect. Now this glucose sparing effect also causes an anti-inflammatory effect. Sorry, I'm blocking you here. Uh, because it causes you to break down proteins uh, for energy. Uh, what, proteins are often important, right? They may be structural, you know, building blocks of your cells, but also antibodies are proteins, right? Um, and so antibodies are what cause inflammation. And again, inflammation typically is a good thing. It's your immune system responding. Now, it can happen out of control when you have an allergy or whatever. But um, so cortisol, which causes us to break down these proteins to produce extra glucose, causes us to have fewer antibodies, can have an anti-inflammatory effect, which is why when you have an allergic reaction, you might put a cortisol cream on there, right? Uh, but it also means that when you are stressed out, or when you are on a lot of, of you know, steroids, um, they can suppress your immune system and you can get sick more easily. Now, for certain people that have extreme cases of COVID, for instance, um, one of the ways that COVID can cause a lot of problems is it actually, it gets your immune system to go into overdrive and you get too much inflammation in parts of your lungs. And so, again, not for everybody, because if you have, you know, moderate cases, you, you want your immune system to be functioning. But for some people, there's a little bit of evidence that certain kinds of steroids um, that have this anti-inflammatory effect can help uh, reduce uh, the, the seriousness of the disease. Similarly, if you have a terrible allergic reaction, you know, to poison ivy or something, they may give you steroids. And really what they're giving you is something like cortisol, some sort of glucocorticoid. Or if you have had a transplant, you might get some sort of steroids to reduce your immune system so that you don't reject the new organ. Lastly, you have the zona reticularis, and this um, can produce some sex hormones, right? Some androgens that um, could also be converted into estrogens. This is minimal in adults, but for kids who don't have um, uh, gonads that are producing a lot of hormones yet, um, these can can uh, produce some hormones in the in the meantime. So your adrenal cortex has layers that produce a bunch of steroid hormones, right? Uh, our mineral corticoids like aldosterone, our glucocorticoids like cortisol, and then some sex steroids um, when you are young. The adrenal medulla, which is essentially just a different gland, um, produces epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are amino acid derivatives, right? Rather than steroid hormones. And these things are adrenaline. And we kind of have an, an intuitive idea of what adrenaline does. It cranks up our heart rate, right? It increases our blood pressure. It increases our energy consumption and our metabolism because it's fight or flight, right? Um, I have to do everything I can when there's a, you know, a tiger in my car to either punch that tiger in the face. Right? Is that a good punch? No. Uh, or to flee very, very quickly. And so I better have some strong muscles with lots of blood and glucose. And here's a quick look at that. So you have the capsule on the outside. This is all adrenal cortex, right? Zonoglomerulosa. Uh, on the outer part is, is like aldosterone, zona fasciculata. In the middle is going to be cortisol, zona reticularis, sex hormones. And then here's the medulla down here, which produces adrenaline. 